Meet Serena, your virtual companion for emotional support. The ultimate safe space to discuss your thoughts, your fears, and the ups and downs of daily life. Start your free trial today at serena.chat. Am I the asshole for not wanting my wife to go on vacation? An opportunity has arisen for my wife to go to the beach for a week in October with her friend. She asked if I was okay with her going, to which I originally responded, honestly, that I was not okay with it. We have a three-year-old and a four-month-old. Daycare opens at 6.30 a.m., which is also when I need to be at work. So my wife usually drops them off, and I'll pick them up after work since I get off earlier than she does. She works one full-time job, that has allowed her to work two days from home each week because our infant, and then has weekends off. I work a full-time job during the week, and a part-time job on the weekend. So effectively I have no days off. My wife gets up in the mornings and gets the kids ready, and usually gets up with the baby at night as well, as she gets more days off, at home. Were she to take vacation, this would of course all fall on me. I could probably manage to be late to work all week without issue, as long as I stayed later to make up for it. I told her I was uncomfortable with her leaving for so long. I understand needing a break from the kids, but there's a difference between me watching them for a day so she can relax and her straight up taking a whole spring break. Not to mention, she also has a three-day work trip at the end of this month that will put us in the same scenario. It's a lot for one person, and originally, I did not want children. Granted, I love them more than anything now, but ultimately, I feel like this is the life she chose for herself and she knew what she was getting herself into. I don't want to deny her the opportunity per se, but I don't know of many mothers who leave for that long by themselves with such a young one at home, and I feel like she's being a little entitled. She responded that she's not being entitled because she's just asking me to do what she does every day. She feels like I'm telling her that she can be a mother and nothing else. I don't think this is true, I think I'm just asking her to be a mother first. I know she does a lot as a mother, and I appreciate it greatly, but admittedly I do not feel like I'm capable of doing what she does every day. I do not get the days off, home that she does, and I honestly don't have the patience I should with the infant. After much back and forth, I begrudgingly told her that she could go and that I would just figure it out, and if I absolutely had to, I would take PTO from work to make sure the kids are taken care of. She said not to worry about it, she just won't go. I don't want her to be bitter about it, because I completely understand needing a vacation, especially from kids, family, and have offered alternatives, like watching them for a weekend so she can do as she pleases, to which she was not very receptive. Am I the asshole? Edit. People seem to be hung up on the, this is the life she chose for herself, part. I do not say this to say that she deserves more of the burden of parenting. A lot of assumptions suggest that I do not parent while she slaves away. I feed and bathe and father my kids as well. It is a team effort, but taking over her share while working 60 hours a week is overwhelming AF. When I say she chose this for herself, I mean that getting things her way on her own time becomes much less reasonable, and I feel like she refuses to accept this, or is largely unwilling to compromise when it comes to giving up things she wants. Working from home while parenting young children is not a day off. She does two jobs at the same time. Also if you didn't want kids and she did, you could have ended the relationship. But you didn't and now you're a dad. You made your choice, deal with it. When will people learn that there is no compromise if one person in a relationship doesn't want children? That being said how much childcare do you actually do? From your post it sounds like your wife does the bulk of it and works full time. So she's on duty 7 days a week. You are the asshole and this post won't go well. She deserves a break. Just because she's a mother doesn't mean she doesn't deserve time away. You realize some women struggle with their identity after children because they are told they are a mother first. No she's a human being first who has wants and needs. You say you don't want her to be bitter too late for that. How many times a night are you up feeding your young child? She doesn't get days off as a mother. Yeah you work more, but don't diminish the work she does as a mother. She deserves a vacation. You are the asshole. Info. From reading, it sounds like you each viewed this from how this directly affects you. Is that correct? Have you each tried viewing this as what's best for your spouse, regardless of how it affects you? Also info. Do you put being a father first? Am I the asshole for ignoring my kids screeching tantrums while at home? Throwaway account, not native speaker. I'm, 31F, a stay-at-home mom. My son is 3Y. Oh and my daughter is 6 months old. My husband's niece, Jessica, 19F, 
stays at our place three four days a week because she goes to university close to our place. When she's not here she goes back to stay with her mom, my sill. Jessica doesn't pay rent or do house chores, although her mom sometimes gives us about $100 to help with bills just whenever she can. On to the problem. So my house is pretty noisy. My daughter would cry if she's not psychically on me. Most of the time I would always carry her around so she wouldn't cry. But on the daily whenever I have to bathe my son, I would leave her in her crib and she would scream cry like the world is ending. This usually happens about 15-20 minutes a day. And she's safe, she just doesn't like not being with me. Once I pick her up she would stop crying instantly. On top of that my son would throw tantrums pretty often. At home, I just ignore him and let him screech scream and trash around. To be fair, my son's scream would pierce your ears. Sometimes I have to wear noise-canceling headphones and cover my daughter's ears while he's throwing tantrums. And he does it a lot, like three four times a week, sometimes it happens twice a day. He usually would calm down after an hour, the longest was two hours. There's one particular night when Jessica was at the kitchen washing her dishes, and my son was at the living room just beside the kitchen. He was throwing a really bad tantrum because I wanted him to say, please. If this is a public space or other people's house I would turn on YouTube and he would calm down right away. But because we're at home, I thought he should learn to navigate his big feelings without YouTube. He screamed, screeched, thrashed around like a madman, while I was at the dining table eating my dinner, just a couple steps away from him. Sometimes he took rests from screaming and I gave him water, but once he started screaming again I left him again and back to continuing my dinner. When he stops screaming I would ask if he's done, then I'd hold his hand and say something like, repeat after me. Mom open the box please, but if he starts screaming again I would leave again. This continued for about an hour and a half. Jessus secretly recorded some of it, me calmly eating while watching my son screeching, and she sent it to her family group chat that I am not a part of. She didn't say anything to me, we typically pretend the other doesn't exist. She also didn't say anything when sending the video. My husband was offended by her sending the video as if she was ratting me out. But other Sil said maybe I should do something to calm my kids when they're clearly in distress. She knows it happens a lot, which means Jessica had said something to them before. They're now fighting. Other family members chose not to get involved. I don't think I'm wrong but am I the asshole for ignoring my kids tantrums? Edit. Thank you everyone. All the the not the assholes and the you are the assholes give me insights and new perspectives. I also received some great tips I'll start implementing soon. I will now stop responding to comments and log out of this throwaway account. Have a good day, night. Sounds as if Jessica no longer has a place in your home. Not the asshole. Disengaging while monitoring your son to be sure he's safe is fine. You're not neglecting him. You're teaching him that tantrums don't get attention. He will grow out of it, but it seems Jessica will always be a sneaky, person. Edited to add. I'm also going to speculate that your son is jealous of the attention the baby is getting. Toddlers don't know how to express their feelings. He wants your attention, especially as the baby is on you 24-7. Not the asshole. Jessica is way out of line. I would not have her staying with you anymore. What she did was unforgivable in my world. Consequences for actions. You parent your own way. Managing tantrums is tough and we all do it our own way. Not the asshole Jessica has betrayed your trust, so we'll be looking for somewhere else to stay though, yes? You are the asshole tantrums lasting 1-2 hours. Not the asshole. So you do her a huge favor and she tells on you to the family? I would tell her to get out, that is not okay in any way. Your son is three years old. Maybe it is time to begin with time out in his room when he does this. Looks to me letting him behave like this is not going anywhere. Am I the asshole for saying my wife will have to quit her job if we get booted from another daycare? My wife and I have a three-year-old daughter, Alexis. Both of us work and Alexis has attended daycare since she was one. In the two years since, we have been asked to leave two programs because my wife is a micromanager. I admit both of us went into the first program not really understanding daycare. I quickly learned that they can't provide personalized care and after learning from her teachers, I reset my expectations. My wife, however, has a lot of anxiety and worries about our daughter. She hates when she gets even a little upset. She's in therapy and is working on it. Dot. First program, my wife would constantly watch the live feed and call the daycare multiple times a day. We had several talks about it and the school talked to us twice. 
My wife ended up screaming at one of the teachers and then the director. We were terminated immediately. Second daycare was a little better because my wife began therapy. But my wife was still so nervous and had a complaint every single day. These were not important things, small things like she saw another child took a toy from Alexis and she would cry. The teacher would give the toy back to Alexis but my wife didn't understand why the other child wasn't punished for it. This daycare didn't kick us out but did eventually suggest that this may not be the best program for us. My wife and I decided to pull Alexis out. My wife because of her anxiety, myself because I knew my wife had burned bridges and was becoming one of those moms. We chose a smaller home daycare this time as we couldn't afford another center. The woman who owns it is very nice but also firm. She stands by her boundaries and won't let my wife break any rules, whereas the centers were definitely more accommodating. My wife would take any inch she got. This time, she doesn't get that opportunity. I thought all was well as the owner only speaks to my wife for the most part. Then, I get put in a group text saying my wife has been bombarding the owner with texts every day despite the owner saying she will text her at lunch when things are settled. She said at this point, she will only be responding at specific times of the day and not looking the rest. The owner then added sent several pages of the contract with passages highlighted, reminding us of certain policies my wife had violated. I was pissed. When Alexis went to bed that night, my wife and I talked. I said this was our last option for daycare. The other centers are too expensive and this was the only home daycare in the area that we like. A nanny is not in our budget. My wife made a million excuses, including that it's not her fault she's anxious. I said if we are asked to leave this program too, my wife will be the one quitting her job to watch Alexis, not me. This upset my wife. I pointed out I've spoken to her kindly about this plenty of times. I encourage her to keep up her therapy. But she can't keep getting us kicked out of programs. My wife is now not speaking to me. Am I the asshole? Edit. I cannot be the primary contact for daycare due to not being able to have my phone on me at work. Not the asshole your wife is the reason daycares have contracts. If she continues to violate the contracts, you'll run out of options because it's a small world of providers and word gets around. Not the asshole. This needs to be nipped now. Your daughter will be picking up on her mom's anxiety already. Your poor daughter I grew up with a mom like your wife, and it gave me crippling anxiety issues I still struggle with. Your wife is a real piece of work for refusing to deal with her issues to your daughter's detriment. Is she always this selfish? Not the asshole. Don't let your wife sabotage you and your daughter's life. Hold her accountable. Your wife is insufferable. Every single one of your responses is about how your wife is refusing something. Whether it be medication or couples therapy. Your wife doesn't sound like she is working on herself whatsoever. Just controlling yet another thing. Would I be the asshole by demanding we return the kitten me and my fiancé just got? Hi. So basically me and my fiancé have been thinking for about a year whether or not we should get a kitten. After a long time we eventually decided we will get one. My fiancé said to me that if we were to get the kitten, she would not tolerate it being rehomed. For me it was fine since I went into this adventure with 100% the goal of keeping the cat for her entire life. Fast forward a few months and the kitten arrived. The kitten blues hit me like a truck, I was crying daily, stopped eating at all and felt like it was the biggest mistake that ruined our life. I underestimated that a kitten on her own would get lonely really fast. Even though I work from home three days a week and my girlfriend works in shifts so she has really odd hours. The worst is at night when the kitten just cries non-stop since she isn't allowed in our bedroom. Since I make by far the most money in our relationship and I am really planning for our future I worry that it will be affecting my professional career and eventually our future well-being. My fiancé also loves travel so this has been made a bit more difficult too. It feels like we basically shackled our legs for the next 20 years. I'm basically on the edge of a depression. Meanwhile I'm also noticing my face being itchy all the time and if I sit shirtless in the couch I basically have to shower immediately after or I'll be scratching myself all night long, and even after a shower it is still itchy everywhere. I discussed all of this with her and she told me that if we rehome the kitten that she will never recover. That we are failed parents and that having a kid will also be very difficult. She warned me beforehand and I completely agree. Although I don't think I would be willing to take meds for 20 years to reduce the itching. I really don't know what to do. 
We had the kitten for about nine days now and I want to make the decision early since we can still bring her back and I am sure she will be adopted within a week. And hash x 200 b. I love my fiancé to death, I want to spend my whole life with her. But either I break her heart and possibly scar our relationship. Or I take the gamble and hope the allergy gets better and the cat won't be unhappy alone and stops being so attention-seeking. Tomorrow I am going to the doctor to see what my options are with the itching and my fiancé already said she is really worried if I really am allergic that I want to get rid of the cat. And hash x 200 b. Any advice is welcome. Am I the asshole if I want to get rid of the cat? Will she get over it? My fiancé is very stubborn and doesn't forget easily. And hash x 200 b. Too long did not read. We got a kitten nine days ago. I got big regrets and possibly allergies. Returning the kitten will break my fiancé's heart and scar our relationship. Keeping the kitten will possibly break my mental health and require me to take meds or pray it will get better. And hash x 200 b. Edit. The depression stuff has improved and I think that will eventually get better. Maybe I over-dramatized it a bit on that line. You are the asshole. You got an animal without thinking it through, promised to keep him, but you went back on your promise. You didn't even last two weeks. You clearly weren't ready for a pet. It is so sad that it's the kitten and your fiancé that are going to suffer. Next time, learn to put your foot down and learn your limits. You are the asshole. And grow the F up. It's a kitten for Christ's sake. A baby animal in a new home with strangers. It's struggling with this change just as much as you are, which is entirely too much, I might add. Get some Bendril for the itching, although I'm sure it's psychosomatic because you've worked yourself into a tizzy over a kitten. You're crying and stopped eating because of a kitten? Don't get one cat, they need companionship. You should have researched this more. Of course a poor baby kitten is going to meow at night, it's scared and lonely. You are the asshole. Everyone sucks here if it really is allergies then it is perfectly acceptable to talk to your fiancé about how big of an issue it is. On the other hand, regardless of allergies or not, did you not expect a cat to impact your life? You aren't shackled for the next 20 years. Just because you have a cat now, there are friends, family, and businesses that will cat sit while you go on vacations and stuff. It will take some time but eventually the kitten will stop crying at night. Get over it. Like your fiancé said, if you decide to have kids you will have an exponentially harder time. If you are letting a cat you have had for 9 days have this much of an impact on your mental health you really should not be having kids.